a little bit cold here in the desert today but I've got a way that we can have a nice hot brew. Today what I'm going to show you is how you can make a camp stove out of these three items. It's literally not going to cost you a cent and it's something that you can even do in your own backyard. What is it? How has it come about? And a lot of other questions to be answered too. But we're going to dive into another interesting video, so stay tuned. Rightio, I'm always looking for, I guess, ways that I can reduce weight in my car or in the Land Rover. And I really love simple methods of going about things. And what I'm going to show you here today is actually how to make a Benghazi camp stove. And it's got a really interesting history behind it, but I'll talk about that while we're boiling the billy on it. What I'm going to be using is the uh, galvanised bucket here. Now typically you would use an oil drum or back in the 1940s you, you would use a biscuit tin. So a vessel that holds about 18 litres to 20 litres. You need that, you need petroleum or gasoline and you need sand. And funnily enough out here in the desert there's plenty of sand. So let's make this uh, camp stove light it up and get a brew going. So what we want to do is we want to fill the bottom of the bucket or the oil drum with sand. We want to make sure obviously we haven't got any bits of wood in it because they're going to get set alight. That's pretty good. Okay, on to the next step. So we're going to use this uh, recently restored 1951 jerry can to provide the fuel for the stove. Uh, I restored this in a previous video which you can check out on our channel. Now I've got to be careful with this step because uh, as Damon and many people know I'm sometimes a bit liberal with the petrol but anyway. now is a bit of mesh which I'll sit in there pop the billy on there and we'll just wait for it to boil it's that simple while the billy boils, I'll tell you the story behind the Benghazi stove. It's actually a really interesting story. But uh, I'll just make sure I've got the tea leaves ready first. So the Benghazi stove uh, came about in 1941. And it's actually really interesting. Obviously World War II broke out in 1939. Uh, France fell in 1940. And then the Italians thought they'd get in and do what they could in North Africa and this obviously aggravated the British and obviously the Commonwealth troops too and so what started was the North Africa campaign now the one thing that the British found and the Commonwealth troops found was that the actual stoves that they were issued with were completely and utterly useless in the desert the one thing about the desert is is sand sticks to absolutely everything and being out here in the desert I, I know that only too well. So the stoves that they were actually issued with 
sand got into all the components and it just simply didn't work. But the one thing that they had surplus amount of was fuel and drums. So what they'd do is exactly what we've done here. They would put sand into a drum and then you'd pour petrol in it. Now, what's really interesting is sand is permeable. And this means that the actual grains don't line up. So when you actually pour water or petrol or some kind of liquid in, it'll actually soak in or actually go down into the sand itself. So it creates almost like a bit of a wick, you could think. By then lighting it, you've then got yourself a portable campfire. And the fantastic thing about it is too, is that when I'm finished with this, I'll kick the bucket over, I'll scatter the sand out, and then I'll put the bucket in the back of the Land Rover and drive off. And there's no sign of myself actually being here. So that would have been a real benefit to the uh, troops in North Africa during the Second World War. And this was also used in great effect uh, later on, obviously with the invasion of uh, Europe in 1944. So anyway, I just thought this was a really interesting piece of kit. And it's something that you can literally make out of nothing. This is just a galvanised bucket I had kicking around in the shed. A friend of mine's doing some renovations, so uh, I asked him if he had a bit of uh, Rio mesh to go in a concrete slab, and then just the billy, and that's it. And the great thing about it is too, is as I've said, it's like a portable campfire. So when, when I'm done with this, I can sit here and just look at the flames and enjoy it. So if I'm in an area that, you know, you can't have a proper campfire, I can have one of these. So you're not really missing out because let's be honest, if you're going camping and you don't have a campfire, then that just ain't camping. It isn't camping at all. But anyway, let's, let's have a look at the billy and I think it's probably getting close to being boiled now. Yep, got a bit of steam coming out the top. Okay, we better get the brew on. Okay, so it's not a raging torrent, but it's certainly warming up okay. I've taken the lid off, so the water's probably cooled down a little bit, but I would say if I put my finger in there, yep, that's certainly warm enough for a brew. Okay, let's get it sorted. So you've got to have proper tea leaves. It just it isn't it isn't a proper cup of tea without tea leaves. So I'll just put stir that around a little bit. Now many of you probably think, oh that's an absolute pain because you've got to take a tea strainer with you not the case. If you let it settle for a bit and you put some cool water on top, the cool water actually acts as a barrier and keeps the tea leaves down to the bottom of the actual billy can. So that's a top tip for you. Anyway, we'll get a bit of instant uh, powdered milk. That's not a bad brew. And the great thing is, it doesn't have a funny taste to it. I can't taste petrol or gasoline or anything like that. The Benghazi stove is a, just, you know, just a fantastic um, case of, you know, people really thinking outside the box. And some of the accounts that I've actually read are really interesting. Some people would actually then put a container on top and actually make a pressure cooker so you could literally cook just about anything on it it does have its limitations though as you've noticed it's slowly burnt down and <laughs> there's a few instances recorded that people have tried to inadvertently top it up and uh, maybe they didn't use as much common sense as they should have because it's obviously come back and ignited so like anything it's not perfect but it's a handy little trick to have up your sleeve and it's something that you can do the next time you're out travelling around or you can give it a go in your backyard too. If you are wondering where you can get a seriously serious cup from, 
click on the link that should have popped up just about now and you can actually visit Seriously Series online store and you can pick up mugs, socks, jumpers, pretty much just about anything. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you are enjoying the content here at Seriously Series, then please do consider supporting us via Patreon. And if that isn't your cup of tea, then you can support us via our website through PayPal by clicking on the web link in the content section down below. And if you're new to this channel and you're trying to figure out who we are, what we do and all the rest, then click on that subscribe button down below, click on that notification button too. And that way you won't miss out on one single video. Anyway, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you later on. Mm. Top stuff.